Welcome, everybody. Today's presentation is titled New Options in the Treatment of Negative and Cognitive Symptoms of Schizophrenia. This presentation was originally given in May 2012 to the NAMI community in Los Angeles, and I'm archiving it here in four sections at schizophreniaoptions.com. The goals of this presentation are fourfold. The first is to discuss the negative and cognitive symptoms in schizophrenia and to understand the general symptom categories that occur in schizophrenia, including the impact and treatment barriers regarding these different arenas. The second is to discuss the NMD receptor and the dual neurotransmitters, glycine and glutamate. The third section, I discuss sarcosine, which is a natural glycine transport type 1 inhibitor. And in the fourth section, I discuss N-acetylcysteine, or NAC, which is an antioxidant precursor to glutathione with potential benefits in schizophrenia. Symptoms in schizophrenia can be broken out into a number of different categories. Positive symptoms, negative symptoms, and cognitive symptoms are the currently most common symptom categories that we use. The breakdown into different categories is helpful both for research and for treatment uh, planning because there are different treatments that affect these different arenas uh, differently. And so it can be helpful to characterize the symptoms that the patient you're working with suffers from so that treatment planning can occur appropriately. Positive symptoms are the common symptoms that people think of when they think of schizophrenia and include sensory disturbances, hallucinations, auditory hallucinations, voices, and such, loose associations in thinking, and delusions. Um, the negative symptoms would be probably best characterized as a loss of personality and individuality, although we'll get into the specifics of this category next. And cognitive symptoms uh, generally refer to the deficits in processing, memory, and abstract reasoning that are so common in schizophrenia. Regarding the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, we see a number of different categories, and it depends on the person and the underlying genetics probably as far as what symptoms are worse in a given patient. But it's very common to see a lack of spontaneity and flow in conversation in individuals with significant negative symptoms. There are often stereotyped or rigid thought processes with decreased spontaneity and flexibility when thinking. There can be active social avoidance, diminished social involvement, often due to fear and hostility or distrust, even of loved ones and good friends. Other negative symptoms include blunted affect or emotional range. Uh, a diminished emotional responsiveness, uh, modulation of voice and facial expression, communicative dress ge gestures, decreased body language. There can be a generalized emotional withdrawal, an internalization of uh, the person turning inward, and uh, decreased commitment to previous interests. There can be poor rapport or interpersonal relatedness with individuals that they previously were close to and also with new contacts and acquaintances. And finally, there can be a passive apathetic social withdrawal with diminished social interests and initiative, a passive uh, approach to life in general. Regarding the cognitive symptoms in schizophrenia, conceptual disorganization is common with disorganized thinking and disrupts goals and problem solving, circumstantial or loose associations, we see commonly with uh, over-ascribing to meaning between different uh, events that may be just coincidental. Uh, difficulties in abstracts thinking are common with uh, poor problem solving and symbolic reasoning. Uh, disorientation to person, place, and time is sometimes present. There can be mannerisms and posturing. Uh, with awkward and stilted, disorganized appearance, and finally, poor attention with concentration and distractibility issues that uh, can make it difficult to sustain and shift focus. This can probably uh, impact memory formation and mastery of new material and information as well. It's important to note 
that the positive and negative syndrome scale symptom subcategories discussed in these last three slides are based upon a recommendation of Lindenmeyer in a study that reorganized the original PANS into five different categories uh, to make it more useful for research and also for treatment planning. Unfortunately, the negative in cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia are simply a problem without simple solutions. Uh, there are currently no FDA-approved medications for the negative or cognitive symptoms, despite the fact that it's well understood that these symptoms can be extremely debilitating for patients and can impact their recovery significantly. Uh, the medications that we currently do have FDA-approved for schizophrenia in general uh, do help, but they are generally uh, better at treating the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, the hallucinations, uh, voices, delusions, paranoid thinking uh, that we see so commonly. They are not nearly as good at treating the negative and cognitive symptoms of the disorder. Negative and cognitive symptoms persist often despite uh, adequate medication treatment. Even sometimes high medication doses with multiple medications you'll sometimes find are ineffective at treating the symptoms in this difficult arena. And studies show clearly that the negative symptoms of schizophrenia often have a larger impact on the quality of life than positive symptoms. They're associated with learning issues, difficulty working and maintaining friendships, a poor social life, and difficulty planning for the future. In the next section of this talk, I'll be discussing the NMD receptor and the two neurotransmitters, glycine and glutamate, that act as dual. Uh, activating neurotransmitters for that receptor, and also we'll be discussing the uh, contribution of NMDA receptor dysfunction to the negative and cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia.